Today we're going to be showing you guys the most popular photo editing app out right now. It's on Android finally. Now we're showing you guys on iOS right now. We're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get around the app and how to make your pictures better than they ever were. We're going to jump in here and show you guys a couple different things uh, feature wise and um, give you a quick little tour. Now when you're in the preview window here you could swipe left and right to go through your camera roll or whatever photo you're in. Um, go through, pick the image you'd like. We'll start with this one and I'm going to show you guys a real quick look at all these buttons on the bottom what they do now here's all your manual settings to change all brightness shadows midtones grain sharpening exposure all that good stuff now on here we have a bunch of filters which everyone is used to filters different types of things um, you have here we have different lens effects which you could add like dust and different types of uh, grungy effects to the images rotate them flip them around we're going to jump in here and show you the first setting. Now, now you can see this image is a little desaturated looking, so I'm going to click on the saturation here and up it uh, quite a bit to give this image some more pop. You can see the plants have a yellowish hue to them. So I'm going to go over here to the um, temperature button here and then cool down the temperature just a bit so I could kind of get a much more realistic color of the plants and give them that green vibe. So we can adjust the exposure here and now you can see that it's going to really make the image look blown out and super hot or cool it down and look really dark. I'm kind of content where that is right now. You have the clarity button which kind of gives it an HDR kind of pop. Uh, I don't really want to use that particularly for this image. Um, you have an exposure of highlights which will basically either brighten all the highlights or tone them down so you can kind of get a little more realistic look without the images being blown out shadows does what it, it says you could take shadows away or just brighten them up just a tad bit you can see the mountains on the right side are getting affected you can really bring that shadow out and make it very dark or you could bring it out and kind of look faded now the highlight tones here now this is going to affect anything that's a highlight which is basically anything bright and you could bring it down here and you can see I could give it that sky a really bluish tint and kind of mess around with different settings if you're touching on the color. But we're just going to jump out of that. Now you can do your shadows. Again, you could adjust your temperature if you want, make it warmer, make it cooler looking. Um, move over here to the vignette and you could add like a darkening shadows around each image. Um, you could also do a white version and give it a much more of a heavenly glow. You could go over here and add some grain, which is going to make it look like a real picture. You can see that the sky gets a little grainy and it's got a more grungy photo look to it. Now you could also sharpen an image, which I don't really want to sharpen this anymore, but you can see that the cars in the background really pop out when you add that sharpening effect. So we're just going to go back through here and show you filters now now you can go through filters and pick something that really you know fits whatever you're looking for the mood you're trying to set now there are tons of filters to go through now um, you know don't be scared about messing around with filters and picking stuff if you accidentally click the check button you could go back so you can see the undo button on the bottom left here you can only go back once again like I said you could revert the image if you tap it again so we're just gonna jump back here and pick a different filter now you could tap on the middle of the screen after you pick your image and you'll see that it goes to the original state of the very beginning first step where it was a little desaturated looking. Now right now it, got a, it has like a 70s vibe to it so you can see that it's a pretty cool filter. Now I can undo the filter again if I'd like and pick something else. Um, you could also stack filters. Now I'm going to go through here and pick another filter and stack it on top of what we have. You could also adjust the transparency of the filter or the intensity. Bring it up and down, whatever you want to do. Don't be afraid to mess around with different filters. You can stack filters actually. You can see I have this one filter here. We'll go through here and pick something. These have a very vintage look to them. Um, we'll go through here and pick this one because it's a little dark. So we're going to hit the checkbox and now we can go through and stack this filter with something else that looks, you know, crazy or scary and make it look like a horror movie and we'll show you exactly when something gets stacked it's in black and white right now and now we could 
add a whole new different vibe to which are basically black and white filters so if you make your image black and white you could get pretty much double your filter looks here because you can see that it gives it a whole bunch of different black and white vibes which are pretty creepy now we'll go through here and see if any light leaks now you have a ton of light leaks to go through you could rotate them up down left right you can see I could flip it around here and just rotate it around the image and give it a really cool you know California vibe to it so let's see if I could pick something that comes up in the sky now you could go through and change the tones by tapping this little color box here you can see that looks pretty cool and now we're gonna move into our next step here now you could crop you could rotate an image you could flip them left and right whatever you want to do that's all pretty much you know right at your fingertips you could straighten an image now you can see the bridge is pretty crooked but the rest of the land the horizon is pretty straight so there's pretty much something I don't want to mess with too much because it's actually straight it's just the bridge itself is at a weird angle so we're gonna hit OK now you could do a really cool effect here now this is a double exposure type of effect and what you can do is basically let's see we'll pick something here with green which doesn't really fit what we're looking for but you can see the image that we have now it's gonna overlay it on top of your your picture that you were working with right here and now you could go around and adjust it and change the size zoom in move to scale exactly how you want it to be and uh, we'll show you what happens next now what it's gonna do is overlay it as if you had a double exposure and from down here you could go through all different types of settings to flick through and um, you know give it a different you know transparency effect now this isn't really the best picture to combine but you can kind of see what we're working with you can re really make stuff look like you know a piece of art rather than just a picture so now we're over here to our final frame section now I usually always post to Instagram so you're gonna click on this third option right here which is gonna fit it right into a square and from there you can tap on the top right change the colors of the backgrounds do any single color you'd like um, I usually do white or just black. You can see this looks really great right now. You could also tap on the top left here and there are a bunch of different uh, patterns that you could buy. Um, you get a whole bunch of them with the, the 99 cent purchase. You could try out just a few of them and see how they look. Now you could really give up, um, give your images something, you know, vintage looking just by clicking on the different shapes and such. Um, really just give it something really cool and unique and uh, you know give it that type of vibe now you could also change the transparency of how how you want the shape to be how transparent give it that type of look as well and um, give it a you know just a very unique vibe so we're gonna keep it at white right now you can see the transparency level is halfway which I kind of like it like this and if I had that setting that's not really going to make a difference because it's fitting it within a square. Now you could also round edges just by dragging this little slider and give it a cool little effect. But you can see my image is pretty much perfect right now. This is exactly how I want it to be. So I'm going to tap done on the top right and it's going to show me my options. The maximum is what the picture was taken at. So I always want to export it if I'm saving it to my camera roll at maximum resolution. You could post directly to Instagram just by tapping Instagram or just save it right to your camera roll and a few seconds later you're done. Now we have this image here of a photo shoot I just did for one of my models and um, we're going to show you the framing. Now I'm going to jump in here to our settings here just to see what we can work with. I'm going to go through a filter here and find something that has a vintage vibe to it that looks like a classic magazine which was what we were going for with the shoot. And you can see a lot of these filters have a really nice look to them. You can see that it's not like Instagram. You could uh, you know, go through a whole bunch of different ones that you want to see. Um, adding different light leaks and different filters really going to change how your images are going to feel the vibe of them. Um, you can really just you know, already see that the images have a really cool you know, effect to them. So you can see, we're going to go through here. I don't know if I'm going to end up using any of these actually. This one actually isn't that bad. It has a cool vibe to it. You can rotate it and just bring it down to the bottom. Kind of have this vibe where he's glowing. 
And then we have an instant film one, which is one I use more so than any of the other ones, which gives it a cool Polaroid looking effect. You could go through here, zoom in, zoom out, crop your image. Now you can see this is not going to fit within Instagram, so you're going to tap these little two vertical bars here above, and you'll see that it puts it right within Instagram. You can see that it's going to fit the image just fine if you post it to Instagram. Um, every single little filter you add is going to make sure it fits just right. And um, there's some really cool wood patterns. Now these definitely uh, are 99 cents in the in-app purchase, so if you want to get them, you just have to purchase them. But it's a really cool effect that uh, creates a you know Polaroid looking effect. And of course, at any time, you can just tap the first icon here to just get rid of the frame entirely and be back to your original image. So once you get the hang of Afterlight, you're really going to be able to fly through the different settings and know exactly what is going to be perfect for your image. Um, when you're editing nature stuff, you really want to make sure the temperature is right that looks exactly like how it was when you were there taking the picture. There's a lot of fun things you could do in here filter-wise, frame-wise, different light leaks and all different types of different things. Um, so I hope you guys learned something watching this. There are a ton of different settings in here. I learn new things on here all the time. Um, it's a pretty great app. If you guys have any questions, just hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. You can follow me at I am Sakura. I would love to hear from you guys. So I'm going to leave you with a look at some of my photography work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.